All right, so welcome to the Foundation's Conversations <laughs> at Home program. I'm Randall Park. You might know me from a show called Young Rock, uh, amongst others. But before I start, I want to let you know that the Foundation has set up a COVID relief fund in order to support thousands of union performers who are going through tough times. Uh, since March of 2020, thanks to your donations, the Foundation has given nearly $7 million in emergency aid to more than 7,000 performers and their families. If you're a sag after member and need help, please ask. And if you can help, please give. Information can be found in the description of the video. So thank you for your support. Uh, now, it is my pleasure to introduce the cast of Young Rock, the great Dwayne Johnson, uh, Stacy Leilua, Joseph Lee Anderson, Uli La Latukefu, Adrian Gru, Bradley Constant, Anna tu Tuisila, uh, and that's the cast. Uh, to all of you, I have to say, I'm just so honored to be a part of this series. It's so special. And, and you all do such an incredible job of bringing so much heart to these characters. It, it's, it's a real joy uh, to be a part of and to watch. Uh, Dwayne, I just have to ask you, um, what's it like working with Randall Park? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got to say, Randall, I, I've, uh, well, first of all, before I answer that wonderful opener of a question, uh, thank you for putting great in front of my name. However, truthfully, the great goes to the rest of the cast. And right. I was just lucky enough to sit back and watch these amazing uh, human beings bring this wild and crazy life that I've been lucky enough to have bring it back to life uh, and, um, you know, and, and have it be welcomed in everyone's living room has just been extraordinary. So, uh, but what's it like working with Randall Park? You know, I've been a lucky guy over the years to have, I've done a few things in my life that I'm really proud of, but I gotta say that working with Randall Park, it's like, like if, if I'm, here's Jesus, if I met Jesus, <laughs> And Perfect. then it's like, oh, oh man. No. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, 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 I, but I will say this. The truth is, I, as you know, we've talked about this. I am such a big fan of your work. And, and I know that oh. fans out there share the same sentiment. It seems like you are in everything these days, rightfully so. I'm so happy. So proud of you uh, as your friend. But also uh, to let everybody who's watching know this, you know, based on COVID and the restrictions that we had, you and I never had time to really um, dig deep and, and, and rehearse or, and, you know, the very first time we met on set was our very first day together. That's right. So, I, you know, I, I was really quite pleased and happy that so many of our audience members, the millions who tuned in to watch were really uh, happy with our chemistry. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I mean, I gotta, I just gotta say, you know, it, it's always intimidating for me to, uh, to work with, huge stars, let alone the biggest star in the world. And I just have to say thank you just for being so unbelievably kind. And it, it just made me comfortable. It allowed me to be loose. And, and, and I had so much fun uh, working with you. Uh, we all know how talented, how funny and charming you are, but, but can you speak upon just the importance of kindness uh, when pursuing a career as an actor? Sure, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to. I, I think that, um... You know, I think as, a, as, as an actor, uh, and I, again, I, I've been fortunate enough to be part of some pretty well-received projects over the years uh, that have had, lucky enough, global appeal. And, um, but the one thing I think is so important is, is kindness. I think that, you know, as actors in Hollywood, whether it be TV or film, uh, regardless of the level, uh, what, what, a, what a privileged job that we have. Uh, what a unique opportunity that we have, truly. Um, and, you know, to bring stories to life and bring characters to life and um, give people out there a little bit of reprieve from their daily, um, what they're going through. So I always feel like kindness is really the most important thing. I, I, there's a quote that I heard when I was 15 years old. Um, and I think in season two, Bradley Constant is going to say this because he plays the 15 year old me is... Um, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. I always remember that quote, and I've taken it with me everywhere I go. That's that's great. Uh, can but I, get can to, I... get to the cast. You don't want to talk to me, please. <laughs> get to this amazing get, cast. Okay, before I get to the cast, I just want to ask, as far as like the the inspiration behind making this show about yes. your life, like how did that come about? 
uh, why did it come about when it came about? Well, um, we were traveling, it was around 2011. And when I say me, we, it was myself, one of our producers, Hiram Garcia, who's the, now the president of Seven Box, and, um, and our vice president, uh, Brian Gewertz. We are a very tight knit group who uh, were very close in the world of wrestling. So when I went back to, for, to the WWE for my second run, uh, that was a two and a half year run in the WWE, we traveled together. So they were my creative partners. We would write our promos. We would write our matches. We were very, very close to, uh, to what was happening at that time in the wrestling business. And at that time, as many people watching know, uh, Monday Night Raw emanates from a different city every single week. There's no off season. Uh, the schedule is pretty grueling. And so we were traveling every week to two or three cities every week. And as we would travel, so for example, we would land in Dallas, Texas. And right when we got to the airport, we would pull out and we would head down the highway. And I would say, you know, you see that gas station over there? And they say, yeah. I said, well, you know, I bought my first thing. That thing happened there. And everywhere across the country for a good year and a half, I would point out these places. Yeah, you see that school? Well, I went to that school. And that's where I got in my first fight. And I got arrested over there. Let me tell you something else about that. And so finally, um, I remember Hiram and I were having a conversation and he said, you know, all these wild, crazy stories. And we were over in Hawaii making a movie. Um, it might've been the first Jumanji. And uh, I was telling him, you know, that's where I'd gotten in trouble. And a lot of my arrests had happened in Hawaii. And he said, uh, there, there might be something here that's unique. And I said, well, it, I said, I think we could move forward with something like this if there was a way to create a story and a series, if it is a series, because at that time we hadn't pitched it yet. I said, my number one goal would be to present these stories, but make sure that the audience has a really great takeaway and maybe they can, um, uh, maybe they can see some value in some of the lessons that I've learned over the years. Mm. Mm. So then we wound up pitching NBC. That was our very first pitch and to their credit, uh, about 10 minutes into our 45 minute pitch, uh, they said, I, we just want to stop you right here. Uh, we'll take it and we will immediately uh, take it for an, an entire season. It's incredible. And here we are. Here we are. Um, Stacy, you are so amazing as Atta. Uh, in a lot of ways, you're the heart of this show. Uh, you've had a lot of experience working in theater and film, but uh, as I understand, this is your first TV role. Is that right? Uh, yeah, my first um, international TV role, I think. Right. Um, my background has mostly been in the theatre. Yeah. Well, how was, how was preparing for this role different from, from uh, the majority of roles you've had in the past? Uh, well, I think, um, first of all, you know, you're, when you're playing a real person, I don't know if I've sort of done that too much in my career, playing a real person, um, a person who's very much alive and full of life. Um, and also when it's the, with Dwayne being the focus of the show, being very aware that she was a huge and is a huge influence in his life. So, um, you know, there was obviously a lot of care taken into that and um, getting to talk to Atta before filming and connecting with her about uh, her life and her experiences um, as a mother, as a wife, and, um, you know, at times the struggle and um, her influence in sort of shaping uh, Dwayne. So it was kind of like a, a collection of all those experiences and also my own experiences. I'm a mum myself, a sole parent myself as well. So being able to sort of draw on all these things and kind of um, create the character that way, yeah. Mm. Randall, may I jump in really quickly? Sure. I want to say that, you know, Stacy did such a, an incredible job and, you know, my mom has become and truthfully has always been uh, the, the, the rock, if you will, of the family. And um, she really did an extraordinary job of capturing. Um, my mom has a wonderful humanity to her, despite the challenges that she's had over the years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a real uh, mm -hmm. gentleness and tenderness yeah. and, ever flowing optimism that my mom has through all this has been just incredible when I look back and 
Stacy truly brought that to life in, in ways that I could never even imagined. And um, we are all, my entire family, grateful for uh, her and, and especially my mom, by the way. Because the mom, the first thing my mom said to me once after they spoke in the in the uh, and we all met in a Zoom and we were talking and once we hung up she was my mom said I said mom what'd you think uh, I feel like she can capture your essence and she you know she has all these uh, stories now and the first thing out of my mom's mouth was she's beautiful she's perfect okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's right oh, I love her hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you bring so much like soul and depth to the character too. It's like every time I watch you, I almost like tear up a little bit. It's yeah. just such a beautiful performance. Um, Thank you. Uh, ha, can you speak a little bit on working with three different actors, all portraying one person, but at different ages? I mean, that did that present any uh, mm -hmm. unique challenges for you? Yeah, I, um, leading up to filming, I was aware of that and thinking, oh, you know, you've, she has her connections with. Um, with Anna and with Joseph, but um, the connection with the character of Dewey was going to be three different actors. And so uh, for me, what, I mean, one of those challenges, I mean, was just thinking there needs to be some kind of, um, I guess, a cohesion with that relationship and the growth through it. And, you know, as, as parents, you're sort of growing with your children in different stages of their life and what they need and how they're spoken to. And um, I was aware of that, but, you know, the boys, like, Adrian, Bradley, Uli, they all, um, I mean, just the most perfect casting because they actually all have the same spirit. Yeah. They're yeah. Um, humble, generous, and we talk about kindness, like these guys have it in spades, gentlemen, like it was so easy because when you're connecting with them and, you know, we've, when we filmed it as well, we weren't sort of chopping and changing. So I was able to kind of focus on them in the different stages of their lives, which made it a bit easier as well. Um, but it was, it was honestly like working with the same one person because they, they all share, um, I guess it's like a kindred spirit. <laughs> so yeah, it was just, um, just beautiful and, and actually quite easy that part anyway. Uh, Joseph, uh, you bring so much heart and so much humor uh, to to uh, a complicated character, but I, it's a testament to your performance that you know you can't help but love Rocky. Uh, uh, so I, I'm just I'm just really uh, so impressed by your work here. Can you tell us uh, just about your career before uh, the show and, and and how did you get started in the industry? Yeah, well, how I got started, I was going to college, uh, not really knowing what I wanted to do, just going because I wanted, had, thought I had to go. And they were making an indie film in town, needed some extras. Um, and I was like, I'll go, got nothing better to do. And they ended up giving me a line. And I, you know, I just kind of kept asking me to come back and put me in this scene and that scene. Oh, wow. Kind of like, like, okay, this is what I want to do. So, yeah. I had to go back home and say, hey, mom, dropping out of college, going to be an actor. Don't know how, but <laughs> and, uh, yeah, praise God it worked out. And you just went for it. Just went for it. Um, and you've worked plenty over the years, but uh, as far as when, when this uh, particular project came to you, uh, what was the process like? How, uh, what was the audition like? <laughs> to be honest, when I got the audition, I, I was like, there's no way I'm gonna get it. I, I'm 28. I can't play 35 or, you know, 40. So I was like, yeah, it's not. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't take it seriously because I, I had no idea I would get it. Hey, Joseph. I got a visitor who wants to say hello and wants to tell you what an amazing <laughs> job you did. <laughs> you know the cast, right? There's Stacy and Bradley, Uli. Stacey. Hello, Park. Yeah, Stacy's there. Hey, Joseph. <laughs> I was telling Stacy how you said the first thing out of your mouth after we spoke, after you met with her, was she's beautiful. She's going to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am so proud of you guys. I'm so proud of you kids. Um, Stacy, you couldn't be more me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to be crying right now. She's been wanting every day. She's like, I, I want to respond to these because they see they see all your posts. She sees all your posts. 
I said, yeah. mom, just comment. And she goes, no, but I don't want to comment so everybody will see. Yeah. And I said, well, all right, I'll try and get you the numbers. But here they are. So yeah, it's so beautiful. I love your nose. I, you know, I've been wanting to what? get my oh, nose my fixed. God. And- what? <laughs> The, the scene in the final episode with you guys on the park bench, like, oh, game yeah. over. I was well, like, boring, well, beautiful. You know, we had to do we had to do that several times because I just kept getting emotional. Oh, you know, because yeah. it was just beautiful. But the oh. thing about the nose is that I told him I want no one but Jennifer Lopez to play me. Okay, <laughs> and then he goes and he Hi. goes and he goes. Sure, mom. And he does this to his nose. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, boy. He's been drinking too much. Tequila. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Rocky. No. <laughs> That's Joseph, yeah. I yeah. know. So. I know. Um, he's watching. He's so proud. It's, he's doing a beautiful job. Beautiful job. Mm-hmm. He would be proud. Yeah, yeah, he would be so proud. Yeah. You know, she she always says, uh, you know, the very first episode she watched, Joseph, she was like, <laughs> oh, my God, he looked good. I mean, you really transformed. Yeah. You built yeah. your body up. You had his widow's peak, his hair, his yeah. mustache yeah. and yeah. his mannerisms. You know, he was like yeah. he had this like cool vibe to him. But then my mom was like. He smiles way too much. Your dad, <laughs> your dad, we got the fights. He wasn't always smiling all the time. I said, no, but you know, this just that's his performance for this particular episode. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And the one who plays my mother. Oh yes. My oh, gosh. she's right here. Look. Is she there? Yes. Yeah. Sure. There she is right there. That's Anna. Oh, my God. Oh, Anna. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. When Dwayne first told me that you were going to play my mom, I said, let me see. And he showed me a picture and you were smiling. I said, that doesn't look anything like her. And then, <laughs> but then I showed her another picture where you were in character yeah. with the hair and, said, and looking, you know, really Oh my serious. gosh, that's her. <laughs> and I said, that is her. Uh, look, there's Adrian. He plays little Dewey. Hi, Adrian. Hi, little Dewey. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, my heart is being so fast. <laughs> you're a great job. Beautiful. So proud of you. I, I love I love how you talk, you know, and I love how you represent him. You just I just wanted to reach out and hug you, you know, because he was even though he tells the oh stories, God. his oh stories. No. Tell us more, everything. <laughs> he was was such a good boy he really was he was a good son he was a good child at home you you know what happened in the shopping centers and outside uh had (laughs) no no well that that that's that's um yeah that's that's bradley's age that's when (laughs) we're all the same person (laughs) you play him so well and Stacy, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. When, um, you know, sometimes when you give Rocky looks, I'm saying, "Oh my God, that's me." <laughs> <laughs> you know, because when we was um, growing up, and because we are always around people, we we don't have privacy when we're out. And at wrestling, you know, when people would come up, the fans would come up, the women would come up, you know, that because they want to go in the back and the dressing room you know okay easy ma this okay. is being recorded this is being recorded <laughs> and and i so i told him a few key samoan words where he say mommy can i go with her and i say lei with a smile you know and then that means no <laughs> yeah. or if it, it was somebody that was a little bit you know and i would say eva lea you know <laughs> with a smile <laughs> And so then that means you cannot go. You cannot go anywhere <laughs> with them. <laughs> and then, um, um, but he, he would always listen. Yeah. Well, Only okay, when something. he's with me, he, he would listen. <laughs> all right, Mom, let's say goodbye now because we're going to, okay. we got to continue this interview. I, I could talk all night, but thank you. Thank you. I, at least I get, I get a chance now to thank all of you. I, and, and I will say this every week, every single week on either Tuesday nights or Wednesday mornings when I would see her, she would come to me and talk about the show that she saw the night before and would just be so really moved and impressed <laughs> yeah, because beautiful. you guys keep in mind and I, and you guys know this and Randall, you know, this too, is that the, 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 the surrealness of this whole thing is that everything that you guys have portrayed over the course of the entire season, it's all revolved around some sort of struggle and some yeah. sort of challenge. 
So never, ever, ever in our wildest dreams did we ever think years later, you know, that that struggle and challenge and, you know, as you guys know, cause you put all this on its feet where we were working the gimmick and, you know, you drive a Cadillac from the wrestling show, but then you drive right to your trailer park or right to your little <laughs> apartment, you know? So it wasn't always, it was very challenging time. So the fact that those challenging times now equate to just a series and people are so happy and then you guys, Really, you, you brought just a life and a, and a breath to this whole thing. And mm. you guys bring all the memories back. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right, Mala. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, far, it's far. Anna, 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 yeah. especially you, Anna, too, Thank especially you. with, with my you, mom. And when, yeah, when she Thank was seeing you, my grandmother and yeah. all those times. And, mm. and then, too, to the, you know, we played just really subtly the Samoan yeah. music in the background every time oh, we it's beautiful. went back home. It's beautiful. It's yeah. beautiful. And I love how you, uh, you're talking with the Samoan wrestlers because she would make deals, you know, uh, Vince McMahon. All right, those guys are still alive, Ma. You don't want to say these stories. No. <laughs> this is being recorded. You know, the promoters would um, would all help out my mother because she was the first woman uh, promoter. But um you know, um, with uh, with the Samoan guys, my mom in Hawaii would make deals with them. Yeah, <laughs> and some okay, chickens. <laughs> okay, all right. Say, okay. Say, say goodbye. I love you. Okay. Thank you for stopping okay. me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, Carla. I appreciate it. I'm so proud of you. You're doing a beautiful job. And congratulations to um, Black Adam. Yes, yes. Uli. Yes. Yes. Uli. Yes. Yes. yes, congratulations yes. to... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's Randall. Yes. Randall, Randall Park. Yes. He's amazing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. Here, take your stuff. Oh. Wow. That's mine. That's mine. mine. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Then thank you to our publicists and our network for, for, uh, for letting that happen. Thank you guys. <laughs> that was, that was incredible. And, and really, uh, I think it connects to what we talked about at the beginning in terms of, you know, DJ's kindness and, 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 and the heart of this show and the, the you know, the, the love that emanates from this show. Uh, it's really, really palpable. And, and yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's such a beautiful, beautiful a lot of love. I, I think we surprised the audience too. I think the audience thought that they were going to get one thing and be entertained, yeah. which I, th I think we certainly delivered, but I think we, we really caught them off guard uh, with the love and the soul and the, That's right. And the, and the, wow, I didn't expect that. A lot of comments like that. So it was really nice to see. And, yeah. and the, the credit goes to the cast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 Joseph, we, you, we were, we were talking about when you, uh, when you first auditioned, you, you, you're at, you're, you're so much younger than the character. You, you're, you know, uh, you, you didn't think you'd get it, but, but what, 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 what locked you in? I um yeah I didn't think I was gonna get it so I just threw that out of my head but I never auditioned uh, for Michael before so I was like well let me just try to impress this casting director and be as funny as I could started doing the scene they were like yeah can you come back today and read for the producers and I was like oh okay wow uh, I read for the I read for Notch and some of the other producers same day same day and then I think two days later they called and were like yeah we want to test them. And then got to the test to see all these other guys that were bigger than me that I thought would get it, that I watched them on TV. I was like, yeah, man, no way, no way. And uh, sure enough, eventually got that call that, uh, that I got it and called my mom, started crying, you know. Oh. And then found out I had to test with Uli to do chemistry reads. And I was like, telling my manager, I was like, they're gonna fire me if they see me stand beside Uli. <laughs> <laughs> Something. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was wild. It happened so fast, and then and then the world shut down. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you but you still made it through, and you shot the show, and you and you did such a great job. Um, he did. He did. Randall. He did. A, he did a tremendous job. And yeah. you know, I think that people who who know who knew my dad or or knew what he looked like. I mean, just the yeah. resemblance the resemblance that that Joseph brought was just striking. But then also my dad just had a way about him that, that 
made everyone feel good in the room. He just had that unique ability to come in and light the room up and, hey, you look great. And hey, have you been working out? And did you lose weight? Your hair looks beautiful. I mean, my dad was that guy. Yeah. And then, of course, then ironically, we had this wildly complicated relationship, but yet he was still, the moment he was like Rocky, the soul man to everybody was just really amazing. And he taught me a lot of life lessons too. And, but really Joseph did a tremendous job. And also <clears throat> he had to learn how to wrestle. That yeah. is hard to do. It, to, it takes us years to learn how to, how to become a professional wrestler. Um, and the timing and the moves and, and to, to execute these moves and not hurt yourself mm -hmm. and then not hurt your opponent. So he had, he dove in and he really, he immediately dove into the master class. Mm -hmm. uh, so he did a, an amazing job. Mm. Um, Uli, so you play the, uh, the college years of Dwayne Johnson. Uh, can you tell us what your, what the process was like for you in terms of getting the job? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, went into a, a casting uh, agent here in Sydney. Uh, well, I'm not in Sydney now, but I'm um, in Sydney. Uh, and then I had a few callbacks, Zoom callbacks. And then, of course, I flew over to, to see Joe uh, to do a chemistry read. Um, and as we were wrapping up the chemistry read, news about COVID was hitting uh, hitting the, the you know, TV screens and, and I flew back and, and it was on hold uh, indefinitely. And then, and then uh, yeah, I think a few, I had one more call back and then a few weeks later um, we locked in the job, which was awesome. So, so, so that second call back was over Zoom? Uh, yeah, second and third. And the final fourth one was uh, after I got back from LA. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got to say, my wife and I were watching, uh, we were just watching it again the other night and we were dying at the Johnson and Hopkins episode. We just thought it was so <laughs> funny and so, so like, so low stakes, but uh, you guys were playing it with so much focus as if it was like this epic, huge, dangerous adventure. Had you ever done anything like that before in your career? No, never, never. And I, it, you know, when we read, I remember reading it, going, uh, "Wait, what is it? What are they? What are they panicking about?" And they just go, "Oh, it's phones. Oh, okay." Uh, but none I had never done anything like that. But it was, in, it was, you know, I think part of what makes the show so um, appealing to to many people is this kind of is the juxtaposition between the drama and the comedy and the life lessons and the comedy and and it kind of is so well done by the writers and uh you know jeff nutch and and the other guys so when it came to that episode it just kind of you know it's a whole lot of fun makes sense mm -hmm. yeah well you're so great as a as a 20 year old dj uh it's just so fun to watch you uh, and congrats again on the uh, uh, season um bradley Uli, by the way, let me jump in because i've been talking about yeah. everybody he did an awesome job playing that and by the way that those years were tough years that Uli was pulling off of going to college and being like the man as a freshman and then a steady decline and then a little bit of a uptick because you think something great is going to happen, like that roller coaster that we talk about. And then, boom, you never know what's on the other side of it. And he, you know, so I, I felt like, you know, he really nailed that time in my life where that was my first bout with depression. And he was yeah. just on the couch and he, and he, I say he is in like, talking about myself, but I, at that time I quit school. I, I left, I didn't take any of my midterms and, it, and I got put on academic probation. And at that time I was really struggling and you really did a tremendous job because I felt like my future was, you know, had gone down the drain. I've been injured, not part of the team. And I didn't know how to um, breathe in those waters. And, uh, you know, luckily I, had pulled myself out of it, but he did a, just an incredible job. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the proud of him. <laughs> Bradley, uh, so, so Dwayne, we all know Dwayne has a very public life and we, not much is known about his teen years. Uh, as far as that task, uh, did, that, did, did that give you relief uh, that you were going, going to play something that people didn't know much about or did that add to the pressure uh, for you as an actor? I think it was relief, honestly, because even like when we 
when I first auditioned for it, the first thing I Googled, I was like, oh, what are their pictures of Dwayne when he was a teenager? There was nothing that came up. But I think that took away, you know, most of the pressure because it made me focus more on just like reading the pages and seeing, okay, what, what is it about him that I can relate with? What is he going through? Like, why is he complaining to his mom that he wants, a, you know, a car? He needs a car for this girl. Um, I think there were just more relatable qualities that I found in it, which were nice. And it, it never felt like I was trying to, uh, I guess, imitate a persona or something like that, which is, it took a lot of pressure away. Uh, were, were there any conversations you had with Dwayne uh, uh, or uh, as far as like what his teen years were like and, and how to, how to uh, represent that in the most authentic way? Yeah, he and I, he and I got to chat uh, actually the day after my birthday um, in the summer before we started shooting. And I was, I was super nervous. And I was like, my heart was beating out of my chest, just like Adrian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I was like, I, had, I hit him with like two or three questions. I was like, what was the most important thing to you, you know, when you were a teenager? And um, of course, he mentioned girls and then he, <laughs> he mentioned family was important to him. Um, but I think, you know, after that, as you can tell, GJ is just the most kind, like easy to talk to guy, mm -hmm. which that was my first time meeting him, too. So it was I mean, not a surprise, but it was just so, you know, heartwarming and took away a lot of that pressure for me. Yeah. Um, and we just kind of chatted about, you know, life as being teenagers and um, both of our parents are divorced and different times in life. But I think there's a lot of um, maybe struggles that he dealt with as a, you know, as a teenager, there's this pent up aggression or this, this way that you are at home versus what you think is important to you when you go to school. Um, and I think, yeah, I just found a lot of relatable things, which is pretty crazy. Well, you're, you're amazing in it. You're he, amazing. He, he really is. And I, again, like with everyone, I just have to take a moment to, number one, thank him for just an outstanding performance. I, I think, and, and you know, I'm very critical of, because I mean, again, by that, me as a teenager, but when we see Bradley at that age, I had already been arrested multiple times. We didn't get into that in, in this season, but we will in the next one. I'd already been arrested multiple times. I'd, you know, we'd been evicted out of Hawaii, I sent to Nashville. Then from Nashville, got kicked out of Nashville up to Bethlehem. That part we didn't go over, but we will <laughs> next season. But he, at that time, and I was struggling with identity. I had an identity crisis and I didn't feel like who I was as a 15 year old at that time. I think because I had gone through such a long line of trouble and again, all the things that I shouldn't have been doing and I think that compounded in my head now looking back, like, oh, I, I, I'm just not good enough. And I, I now maybe if I move to a different town, then I'm going to just completely change my identity and become somebody else. I don't have to be this screw up who just was kicked out of Hawaii. And I mean, his the humanity that, that he brought, Bradley brought, was just really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful, truly. Um, so Adrian... Uh, you're just starting out in your career. Yes. Uh, so what would you say was He's already a better actor than I am, which is amazing. <laughs> oh, better than me. <laughs> better than <laughs> <you>. <laughs> So what would, what would you say the biggest lesson uh, is that you've learned while working on the first season of this show from an actor's, um, young actor's perspective? Well, I learned that from when I first uh, started auditioning and while I was working on the, uh, in, uh, in Australia working on set, I realized that me, myself, um, I have to really work hard and put the hours in and do the, all the necessary things I had to, to one, get the role. Then when I was in Australia, I realized that in the script, uh, Dwayne had to do what he needed to do and he needed to put that effort in. And it taught me that I needed to work really hard for what I want and you can get anything you want as long as you put that effort in. And that really changed my perspective about everything. It was mm -hmm. amazing. Man, as if this kid isn't going somewhere in life, huh? I mean, <laughs> We're all so proud of you, Adrian, and I am too, especially. And as I shared with you before, uh, many, many months ago, you know, you're the anchor of this whole show. And, you know, to put them on your on your shoulders, to put this whole thing on, on its shoulders. I mean, it's called Young Rock. And 
you know, one of the titles we had worked with early was possibly Little Dewey was going to be the name of this <laughs> series. I mean, <laughs> but it is truly on your shoulders and you've done such a great job. And as my mom said, you know, at your age here and the age that you portray, I was a pretty good kid. I was a pretty good boy. And I was so curious about the world and uh, I looked up to everything and all, everybody around me, these guys, these pro wrestlers, they were all my heroes. And you really portrayed that beautifully. So we're all so proud of you. Thank you so much. I will always remember this. <laughs> You're, uh, incredible, work, incredible work, Adrian. Um, so Anna, you are equally incredible. It's so fun watching you, uh, you play uh, Dwayne's grandmother. He's the other anchor. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, Leah Maivia uh, was one of wrestling's first female promoters. Uh, she was also a caring mother figure and she had this, her family and she had this extended family. And uh, she was just such a powerful force uh, of a person, of a human being. How did you approach playing her? Well, thank you. I just wanna say again, thank you again for this great opportunity. Um, Apart from being the intuitive mother-grandmother role, that was really easy, uh, given um, I was around very inspiring women the same, my mother and my mother-in-law and other women in my family, which is totally different from, from me personally. So I had to really dig deep when I read the, um, the brief around Leah Mavia during the audition that she was um, the first female promoter and she was very tough and she had to, to really work her way to where she was at the time. So, um, so it started from the audition process really was to just almost be out of body for me. I'm not a very confrontational person publicly. So I had to make sure that I um, could portray this woman who really wasn't um, who really didn't care about what people thought about her. She just needed to get the job done. So in the beginning, it was really quite nerve wracking trying to, to play someone who is really important in this whole world, given um, Dwayne Johnson's grandmother. So I had to really dig deep to, to try and portray this woman who was quite ruthless and really um, business savvy and who really had um, no holes barred, you know, with other, other um, male promoters in the industry. So um, it was a lot of work and it was evident, you know, during my audition, because um, I had to do about four or five times in different um, roles. And, um, but what attracted me most was that there was, she was Samoan and there was a lot of Samoan, Samoan-ness about her mm -hmm. character, which, which really dug deep for me. And so, you know, playing the tough person, but being a, t a Samoan woman at, as well, was something that I, I really wanted it, really wanted it, and I really wanted to play that role with all my heart. And, um, you know, and here I am now. So it was about digging deep to to try and portray someone who was very important. And as mm -hmm. Stacey said, people were still alive and who still was the backbone of the um, Polynesian pro wrestling. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, Randall, yeah, on a... On a she blew us all away. And, yeah. you know, my grandmother was the matriarch of the family and very, very tough and very ruthless. And we tried our best to contain yet still present in a family comedy with a little bit of drama on NBC in that kind of way. Uh, but uh, Anna, she really, like, really embodied the soul and the spirit of my grandmother. And if you think about it, you know, there have been many before us and many after us of, of really strong women who are groundbreakers and ceiling busters. Um, and my grandmother certainly was one in a world that had a very seedy underbelly. And it was very hardcore because this is not pro wrestling today is much different. It's a publicly traded company. It's, it's forward facing the world knows everybody in the promotion and the wrestlers and, Back then, in the early 80s, where it was little fiefdoms um, of, of, of promotions, and they were all ruled by an iron fist with very mafia-like mafia ways. And my grandmother, uh, and she was the first, and she didn't put up with anything. 
and mm. very, very tough, but also uh, just the sweetest to me, the <laughs> sweetest, the sweetest, sweetest, sweetest woman. And I could do no wrong in my grandmother's at the sweetest, but outside of me, as we saw, you know, a little bit when she was brought up on federal charges for extortion, she was, she was hardcore. And, and now I will say this, this really, as I listen to Anna speak and she talks about the Samoan way and there's Samoa as a term that we have in Samoa, it's like Samoan way. And she talks about the Samoan-ness of this. I, I really give so much credit to our casting uh, directors who were able to cast the show and how you know challenging it was when it comes to culture, uh, and I'm really quite proud that we've been able to you know cast these amazing faces who are um, authentically rooted in our Polynesian culture, which is it, that says something and it says a lot, and especially today in this today's society of our cultures and cancel culture and <laughs> everything that that a lot of noise that's happening. I think, you know, to be rooted in, in such great casting is really special. It speaks volumes, I think, to, you know, that side of production. Mm -hmm. Well, well, uh, Anna, you're incredible. The whole cast, just so incredible. I'm honored to be a part of the show because of you all. Uh, and it looks like our time is up. So thank you well, all. Well, Randall, you were incredible too. I will say yeah. this, like, you know, when yeah. we get back to <laughs> on this crazy bananas presidential run in 2085 <laughs> or whatever it is. Uh, it, 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 we cut back to you and I, and I, I had such a joy, man, uh, with you. And you great chemistry and you're wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, thank you so much, DJ. That means a lot yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, and I will say super quickly before, I think it might've been our first table read. You, I don't think you were announced yet. We, we didn't know who was coming on. And then we went, it's Randall Park. It's Randall Park. Yeah. It's Randall Park. Was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. So we're, we're trying we're, to act cool. Like, hey, what's up? Yeah. 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 Hey, Randall. How you doing? <laughs> it is, yeah. so we're big fans, man. And uh, uh, that, that means a lot. Glad you're part of the show, too. Thank you so Great much. Time. We're all a part of it together. And it, it's a beautiful show. And I'm so happy. It's happy it's getting another season. It's just incredible. Yeah, congrats. But yes, congrats yeah. to everybody here. And thank you all for uh, uh, participating in the Foundation Conversation. Uh, this is Randall Park and the cast of Young Rock signing off. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you, guys. <laughs>